Eddie Chavez. Ruben Nava. And Jesse Romero. Jesus 911. Full Patrol, Jesus 911. Good morning. My name is Jesse Romero, one man car here. I um, uh, just want to welcome you to today's show. I'm going to get into some very interesting topics. I live here out in the Phoenix Valley, and there is one Protestant in the entire world that calls himself an exorcist. His name is Bob Larson. I think he's a Southern Baptist. He, call, he considers himself an evangelical. And he moved, he's moved out here to the Phoenix Valley. He's moved out in the last couple of years. From, he used to live in Los Angeles, Westwood. Uh, he'd also, he's also lived in Nebraska, I believe. But <clears throat> he tries to imitate. Ex- and, and I ask myself when I've seen him, I say, in my mind, I say, why doesn't he just become a Catholic and become a Catholic priest? Because you could just see he's enamored with the ministry of exorcism. But he's on dangerous ground. Because he's not a Catholic priest, he has he doesn't have the authority, but he dresses like a Catholic priest, and he does everything else that a Catholic. He tries to imitate a Catholic exorcist in these sessions, and he has private exorcisms, Skype exorcisms, uh, public exorcisms, where he invites a large audience to watch. And so, I want to talk about some of the things that he's doing wrong, which is basically a whole lot. But before I do that. I want to just mention how important the issue of authority is. When you read the Bible, you have to read the Bible and understand it in terms of Catholic traditions. For example, here's one that, you know, Pentecostal Protestants will deploy. And sometimes even, you know, people in the Catholic Church, say in a prayer group, they'll, they'll use this verse and they'll say, well, I can cast out demons because look what it says in Luke chapter 9, verse 49 to 50. It says this. John answered, Master, we saw a man casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he does not follow he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to him, Do not forbid him, for he that is not against you is for you. It's the gospel of the Lord. So some people will take that, Pentecostal Protestants, and uh, even some Catholics will take that as carte, carte blanche, uh, that, hey, God made me an exorcist. Well, let me first of all give you the tradi- the church's tradition on these verses. Number one, yes, God does div- does give us power to cast out demons over yourself. Did you hear what I said? A self exorcism. Any baptized Catholic can pray prayers of deliverance and exorcism over themselves and has authority to drive demons out over their own person. So that verse cannot be understood as God giving people the authority to go to your next door neighbor and to start doing healing and deliverance and exorcism prayers over your neighbor or uh, or the kids down the street or your co-workers. That power that Jesus Christ gave in Luke chapter 9, verse 49 to 50 Uh, that's a power that's relegated to each and every one of us. Each and every one of us have that power within us to drive out the diabolical. So do Protestants have the ability to drive out the diabolical? Well, if they're validly baptized, if they're validly baptized, now they're, they're part of the mystical body of Christ, albeit in some imperfect sense. But, uh, The Catechism says in paragraph 838, those who believe in Christ and have been properly baptized are in a certain, although imperfect, communion with the Catholic Church. So that's a reference to validly baptized Protestants. They are in a certain, although imperfect, communion with the Catholic Church. Also, because of the uh, the Catholic Church owns and operates the sacrament of baptism. So, Protestant denominations, as such, uh, though we believe them to be deficient in some respects, as the Catholic as the Catechism says, 
uh, the, we, we also believe that this, our separated brethren, whether as individuals or communities, uh, they're not blessed with that unity which Jesus Christ proclaimed and prayed for. But nonetheless, all the baptized have a certain power, at least over themselves, have the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that, that means we have authority over ourselves, but we don't have authority over another person. Because the two types of spiritual authority in the Bible, you have are a religious leader, such as the high priest, a Levites, Aaronic priesthood, prophets, apostles, presbyters, deacons of the congregation. And the second type of, the, of authority we have in the Bible, in Scripture, is the Father's spiritual authority over his family. Those are the two types of authority that the Bible clearly demonstrates. And we have to keep to what the Word of God teaches. We have to hold fast to what the Word of God teaches, the time-honored traditions of the church. So speaking about Protestants, are their prayers prayers for healing, prayers for deliverance, are they effective? Well, the Catechism answers that in paragraph 819. It says, Furthermore, many elements of sanctification and of truth are found outside the visible confines of the Catholic Church. That means, that means Protestants. The written word of God, the life of grace, faith, hope, and charity, with other interior gifts of the Holy Spirit, as well as visible elements. Christ's Spirit uses these churches and ecclesial communities as means of salvation whose power derives from the fullness of grace and truth that Christ entrusted to the Catholic Church. All these blessings come from Christ and lead to him are and, and are in themselves a call to Catholic unity. So the church is teaching what? That whatever is operative in a Protestant denomination, whatever grace is flowing in a Protestant denomination, it's because... That grace comes from the Catholic Church. It's being borrowed by Protestants. And, and that grace that is flowing in a limited fashion among some Protestant denominations, that the Holy Spirit is calling them to Catholic unity. The Holy Spirit is calling them to the fullness of the faith. So, anytime you read a Bible verse where it says that Jesus Christ, you know, like in Mark 16, 17, you will go out and cast demons, Jesus Christ says. That has to be understood in context with the tradition. Yes, who can cast out demons? A, those assigned by Christ in the church. Okay, The bishop is the exorcist of the diocese. Every Catholic bishop has the full powers of exorcism. The Catholic bishop now designates that power in a limited fashion to certain priests called exorcists, and they have the power based on their their, uh, their their the mandate given to them by the by the bishop, who's a successor of the apostles. They have the power to do solemn exorcisms. Who else can actually do a, a, an exorcism, at least a minor exorcism? Dad, in his house, he has exorcistic powers to pray over his wife and his children and to drive out demons because he's the spiritual authority of the home. He's the head of the home. So the father can do imprecatory prayers. The issue of authority is everything. If you don't have authority by God, you open yourself to retaliation from the diabolical. I'll give you an example here in Acts chapter 19. Here's an example of some Jews that didn't believe in Jesus, but were praying in Jesus' name. And they're trying to do exorcisms in Jesus' name. And they got attacked. That's called retaliation. When you don't have authority, you get retaliated by demons. Acts chapter 19, verse 12. It says, Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists undertook to pronounce the name, to pronounce the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by, by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this. But the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped in them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them, 
so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this became known to all residents of Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, and fear fell upon all. And the name of the Lord Jesus Christ was extolled. Many also of those who were now believers came confessing and divulging their sins. And a number of those who practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted the value of them and found it to, found it came to 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of God, the, the word of the Lord grew and prevailed mightily. So what do we see here? We see a few, two things here in Acts chapter 19, what I just read from verses uh, 12 to the very end to 29 to 20, excuse me. We see some Jews who had not accepted Jesus Christ. They're not part of the new covenant. They're still Old Testament Jews, but they're saying, hmm, we've seen Paul uh, uh, drive people out, exercise people in the name of Jesus. Hey, you know, we're Jews. We're, we're part of the old covenant. We believe in Yahweh. Let's try what Paul did and uh, cast out demons in the name of Jesus. They tried praying over possessed people and uh, adjuring them and calling them out in the name of Jesus. And what happened? They got attacked by the demons. The Bible says that's called retaliation, demonic transference. The demons attacked them because they have no authority. Protestants can't do exorcism. They have no authority. And by the way, uh, that's why as Catholics, we did not pray the Pope Leo the 13th. You don't have authority to pray like that. Leviticus 11.44 says, Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I am holy. St. Vincent Pilati said, You must be holy in the way God asks you to be holy. God does not ask you to be a Trappist monk or a hermit. He wants you to sanctify the world and your everyday life. May God show us the path to holiness and help us to follow it all the days of our life. How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions. But what's important is that a baby is a baby inside and out of the womb. Not just after birth, but nine months before at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro-Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance or would like to support the work of Pro-Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the key word pro-life. Pro-Life Across America is non-political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. Pro-life across America, the billboard people. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Real estate for life.org 877 Life US One. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888 526 2151. Soul Patrol Jesus 911. We're talking about the issue of authority. And I want to get into this uh, this one Protestant minister. He he's out here in, in the, the Phoenix Valley. His name is he was a Baptist. Uh, he calls himself an evangelical now. His name is Bob Larson. And so the question is, he calls himself the real exorcist. In fact, if uh, 
if you look at him up on the internet, uh, that's exactly how he he portrays himself. And again, he's kind of uh, he's not really accepted amongst Protestant circles any longer. They look at him as kind of they look at him as kind of like uh, you know he's gone off the rails in the last couple of years. But here's essentially the reasons why, for example, Bob Larson, a Baptist Protestant pastor, this is why he doesn't have authority. He, he does dress like a Catholic priest. If you look at him on the Internet. One of the things that, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm just stating facts here. I'm not judging the guy. He's been divorced. And so it's probably not a good thing to run around the world and saying that you're an exorcist and casting out demons if, if you're divorced. It's just not a good thing. As the Bible says, you know, y- you got to make sure that your house is in order before you go and help out other people. Uh, he also charges a lot of money to do these, what I would call these fake exorcisms. And I, I'll tell you why I know they're fake. Because a lot of these exorcisms, supposedly, <clears throat> I say that, you know, in qualified terms, they all last about 10 minutes, and you can watch a lot of them on YouTube. Now, here's what's, here's what's interesting. His exorcisms, he has, he's about, got dozens of them on YouTube. They last about 10 minutes, and the, the possessed person, the energumen, is always healed after. I'm like, wait a minute. First of all, real exorcisms last about two to three hours. And they take many sessions. It can even take up to, you know, sometimes a, at least a six months minimum for a lot of ex, uh, high, you know, high-level possessions. Here's another thing that Bob Larson does that's very dangerous. Very dangerous. There's YouTube videos where he's, uh, he said he's trained his three daughters <clears throat> to be exorcists. And so he's got three young adult daughters that are running around the Phoenix Valley and flying all over from one church to an, one Protestant denomination to another, <clears throat> doing <clears throat> exorcisms because dad has taught them. He's putting his daughters in grave danger because, again, he has no authority. He's not a Catholic priest who's been commissioned by a bishop. And, and he, he's got a standard fee. When you go to his website, he charges $495. That's his fee for a 50-minute exorcism. He already has it. Uh, he already has it uh, figured out. It takes fifty minutes to do a live exorcism, and it's four hundred ninety-five dollars. Not fifty-one minutes. Not forty-nine minutes. A fifty-minute exorcist. Now, he'll also do public exorcisms. The, this uh, uh, Baptist Protestant minister Bob Larson. Again, he, he's a fake exorcist. I'm just. I'm just kind of having fun with him. I'm having fun with this topic. I feel bad for him. In fact, I, I want to go talk to him. I want to, uh, as as a brother in Christ, separate a brother. I want to at least go talk to him. Tom, you're in, you're in a lot of danger. What you're doing, you have no idea what you're playing with. At least a phone call. I want to follow up uh, with him since he's uh, he's he's out in Scottsdale now. He's got a denomination out there called the uh, the Spirit Healing Center, I believe it's called. But uh, what he'll do, he'll also have these public exorcisms, which are in the Catholic Church. That's a no no. The only person that can assist an exorcism, an exorcism is the family members that are called by the priest. The priest picks the family members that, that'll come. And uh, the team, a team of lay Catholics who are living in a state of grace who are serious Catholics, that's it. It's not public. Well, Bob Larson does a lot of these in public. That is very, very dangerous. Again, when he does them in public, he puts a basket out there and he asks, he asks the audience if it's possible if... Uh, if they can fund his next uh, event uh, going from one country to another. Again, he, and I'll tell you why, why he tries to paint himself off as an exorcist. Here's what he's done. He was very politically smart. Back in 2005, he went, he flew over to the Vatican and he wanted to meet with Father Gabriel Amorth. Okay. And, and he calls it, he calls December 2005 this meeting. He calls it, here's what he says in his own words. He says, uh, there was a warm handshake, the touching of our cheeks in turn, in true Italian style, and the words, 
I'm not, I'm not sure if he said this to Father Amorth or, he, or Father Amorth said it to him, but he writes here, we are doing the same mission for our Lord Jesus Christ. And then Bob Larson writes, 500 years ago, I would not have been standing in the Vatican and a priest might have called, called for my death as a heretic. But this day in December 2005 was a day of reconciliation and embracing on common ground. The belief in waging spiritual war through exorcism, deliverance, and healing. He says, if you haven't been tracing my steps for the last couple of weeks, let me bring you up to date. The priest, the priest who embraced me was Father Gabriel Amorth, the foremost exorcist in the Catholic Church. I have been asked to come to the Vatican in Rome to meet Father Amorth, who has appeared with me in several documentaries, including the recent special on A&E. We are also permitted to bring video cameras to bring to record this historic meeting for inclusion in a documentary we're producing. <clears throat> Bob Larson writes, <clears throat> Father Amorth is well respected all over the world as a primary Catholic priest to consult when, this, when questions about exorcism arise. He is the president of the International Association of Exorcists and heads up a Vatican training school for potential exorcists. He's a fearless man of God who has bravely taken on the forces of darkness, this meeting opened the door to building bridges with one billion strong Catholic community. He says, I believe in the last days before the return of Jesus Christ that all those who believe in spiritual warfare need to join together as a worldwide spiritual army, regardless of our theological differences. That's why this breakthrough was such an answer to prayer. Stop right there. So Bob Larson says that we can become united and have theological differences. The Bible disagrees with that. The Bible says that you have to have sound doctrine because it's the sound doctrine of Christ that saves you. And the doctrine of Christ that comes from Christ comes through the Catholic Church. And so he's saying that, yeah, we could do spiritual warfare together, uh, even though we have theological differences. No, we can't. Because one of the main differences that we have with Protestants is the whole issue of who has authority. And that's what started the Reformation is the Catholic priest, the heretic, Martin Luther, misunderstood the lines of authority. And that's why we have 40,000 denominations today. Bob Larson writes about his meeting with Father Amorth. And by the way, this is why you know, he, he paints himself as a Protestant Baptist exorcist. Because you know, he tells people, well, hey, I met, I met the top exorcist of the Catholic Church back in 2005, and he prayed, and he prayed for me, or, or prayed over me, or laid his hand on me or something. We'll read the article right now. And so as a result of that, he feels like, he feels like Elisha and Father uh, Morth is Elijah and that Elijah gave him the mantle, his mantle of authority. Well, first of all, there's a couple of problems here. Father Morth is a Catholic priest. Rest in peace. He's passed away now. The only person that can give somebody authority to be an exorcist is not a priest. It's the bishop. So again, Bob Larson misunderstands uh, uh, the fact that Father Amorth prayed for him or prayed with him, this nice, je- a nice ecumenical gesture, and uh, he misunderstood that 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 fact that Father Amorth prayed with him or for him or something like that, and he feels like he has the mantle of, of the authority of an exorcist because an exorcist prayed for him. Well, first of all, the only person that can give you that mantle of authority is a Catholic bishop. And the only person qualified or the only person that's a candidate to be an exorcist is not a Baptist minister who is a non-sacramental Christian. The only one that's a candidate is a Catholic priest that's chosen by the bishop to receive the charge of exorcism. So, uh, yeah, Bob Larson has a real mixed under uh, uh, typical Protestant misunderstanding of the whole issue of authority, the lines of authority. He writes in the article. He says, I've always expressed my appreciation for the way the Catholic Church has maintained the tradition of exorcism, even the late Pope John Paul II performed at least three known exorcisms, one in St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome. He says, while many of us Protestants have shied away from embracing deliverance through exorcism, Catholics have kept the practice alive. So he makes a good comment there. He understands that the Catholic Church has kept this alive for 2,000 years and Protestants have walked away from it. And that's why Bob Larson feels he's called to be the Protestant uh, vanguard and to fill the gap here. He writes, the way that Catholics do exorcism 
has some differences as to style, but the basic fundamentals are the same. In fact, I have encouraged our, and he got a little training school here in, in Phoenix. It's called what? It's called do what Jesus did. W excuse me, D W J D. His his training is called do what Jesus did. So he calls it. It's a healing and deliverance uh, training. And guess what he tells them to do, which is dangerous. He has these Protestants that have an incomplete understanding of, 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 of Christianity and no understanding of the sacramental power and sanctifying grace. He has them read. He has his, his deliverance teams, quote unquote, that he's training, read the uh, Roman ritual. That's, that's the ancient Catholic rite of exorcism. He says, yeah, because it's filled with majestic biblical language that boldly confronts Satan and his teams. So he tells his Protestants that he trains over here in Scottsdale, Arizona, to use the Catholic Roman ritual, which contains the rite of exorcism. This is so, so dangerous what he's doing. Why? I just read to you Acts chapter 19. When you're praying and trying to cast out a demon without the proper authority, you will get attacked. You will be retaliated against. And so I can just imagine uh, all the demonic transfers. I can imagine all the, all the uh, reprisals, all the retaliation of all these people, these, these Protestants that Bob Larson is trying to teach here in Scottsdale, Arizona, to be exorcists using the Catholic rite of exorcism you can't use that book. That book is off limits to lay Catholics. Why is it off limits? It, because the prayer there is very, very powerful. It's an imprecatory prayer that can only be used by a Catholic priest with the permission of the bishop. Because here's what you do. I'll give you an analogy. Imagine you're a fourth grader, third, fourth grader, and, and you go up and and you push as hard as you can or punch in the nose as hard as you can uh, an 8th grader. Oh, that 8th grader is going to retaliate. You're not protected. That's what happens when you read this book and you don't have the authority. You're not a Catholic priest. You're pushing demons. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to push right back because you jumped your lane of authority. Jesse Romero will be right back. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And here's an easy way to support us by going to smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center or Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And when you log in your Amazon account and you purchase products, a portion of it will go right back in supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And it doesn't cost you a dime. I want to thank you ahead of time because that supports us year-round. May God bless you and your family. Healthcare news today seems to be coming from everywhere and everyone. It's confusing, at least, and untrustworthy at the worst. Dr. Asetta is a faithful Catholic in the Kern County community. He is trustworthy, well-researched, and will only give expert opinion on matters in his own specialty. Catholic teaching at its entirety is of utmost importance to Dr. Asetta. Give Dr. Asetta a call for your obstetrics and gynecological needs at 661-695-6617. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow! That's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. 
If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Soul Patrol, Jesus 911. My name is Jesse Romero, talking about Bob Larson, who calls himself the real exorcist. And he's made a big splash in the Protestant world. He plagiarized. He uses Catholicism to train people here in Scottsdale, Arizona. He teaches people to use the Roman ritual, this ancient rite of exorcism, which is filled with all this biblical language. But I'll tell you why it's dangerous for, because in the, in the Roman ritual, in the rite of exorcism, you have the Pope Leo XIII prayer, the long form Pope Leo XIII. Now he composed that, he, that prayer back at the, at, at, at the, at the 19th century. It's a long-form St. Michael the Archangel prayer that's actually used during an exorcism. And I'll tell you, uh, it, it, when you look at that prayer, it says right there, uh, this prayer can only be prayed by a Catholic priest by, with the permission of the bishop. Now, there's other longer version St. Michael the Archangel prayers, but they're not the Pope Leo XIII prayer. That one specifically in the rite of exorcism is only supposed to be used by a Catholic priest with the permission of the bishop. And the St. Michael the Archangel prayer, I'll tell you why lay Catholics, especially a Protestant, shouldn't be praying this, okay? Because think about this. All all prayer, all Catholic prayer, they're like, uh, we're like firing weapons. It's like, you know, we're we're firing off weapons. Uh, We're we're firing, let's say, small caliber weapons. Anything that you can hold in your hand or put on your shoulder, that would be a small caliber weapon. And that's prayer. We're firing off small caliber offensive weapons all the time when we pray. But the Pope Leo XIII prayer that's used in the rite of exorcism in chapter 3, that prayer is prohibited. Why? Because it's a high caliber, heavy artillery prayer. And once it's prayed, here's what happens. Once you do that prayer, it's projected into the cosmos. It's projected into the air, and it leaves a high flash radius. In other words, demons are going to be awakened by this prayer because they're going to investigate where this prayer came from. They're going to say, whoa, somebody just dropped a huge bomb on us, you know, a Moab. And so demons are going to say, who was that? Man, look at the smoke. Look at the crater that that left. Now, if it was launched by a Catholic priest who asked permission by the bishop then the demons can't do nothing. The demons are just going to yield to that prayer. But if that prayer is deployed by a lay person without permission and without authority, then you and your family will be retaliated against because demons are very predictable. They follow and yield to lawful authority. That's what we see in Acts chapter 19. I just read it to you. When you start using heavy artillery, high caliber prayer against the diabolical and you're, you, don't, you don't have the proper authority, you're asking for problems. And this is why I feel bad for Bob Larson and his Baptist school. They're, they are, uh, they're way out of their league. What he's doing is, is terrifying. Uh, and and it, it, the, rep- the reprisals and retaliation uh, are very serious. The article says here that Bob Larson wrote, he says, I've always made it a practice to embrace all Christians who have a common faith in Christ and a desire to defeat the works of the devil. He says, my meeting with Father Moore took place in a massive church building that was part of an elaborate facility, including beautiful grounds and landscaping. For nearly an hour, Father Amorth answered our questions about deliverance and exorcism. He pulled no punches and was totally forthright declaring that every Christian can and should battle the devil and cast out demons. He lamented that many in his own church avoid the issue. Okay. What, what uh, Bob Larson doesn't write is that Father Morth, he should have asked him about the issue of power and authority and who can do what. I'm sure he didn't want to broach that topic. I'm sure, I'm sure Father Amorth just told him, yeah, of course, anybody, any baptized Christian, Catholic or Protestant, Validly baptized can pray the Our Father. That's a, that's a minor exorcism prayer. That, you know, you can pray prayers of deliverance for yourself, any baptized person. But Bob Larson is taking this meeting with Father Amorth, and he's basically giving himself a platform saying, well, I met with Father Amorth, 
So that means I'm a Baptist exorcist now because he prayed for me. Okay. He writes here. Um, yeah, after an hour of intense dis- no, I, he says, I felt when he was when I was with Father Amor. This is Bob Larson, the the one that the guy that called himself the real exorcist, and uh, and he's a Baptist, and he's here he's here in Scottsdale, Arizona. But he's known for, he's very popular with Protestant circles because he does these traveling exorcisms in public in these conferences, and uh, yeah, I, I I believe they're staged. I'll tell you why, because all of them last ten minutes. Okay, all of them last ten minutes. They're all recorded on YouTube, and uh, it, that's interesting. I mean, did, did, did Bob Larson tell the demons, okay, we can only do it 10 minutes because there's there's several here people that are <clears throat> possessed, and uh, I have to pray over everybody in front of the cameras for 10 minutes. Then we have to you know, make sure we can all fit them on YouTube as 10-minute exorcisms. I mean, you you could just tell that there's, there's some... Uh, there's some uh, deception going on here. But Bob Larson writes, when I was with Father Amorth, I, I, I felt I was standing on holy ground. To my knowledge, no one from the outside world has been ever allowed there with TV cameras. As a gracious host, Father Amorth pointed out everything in the room that was so special to him. He, uh, he says, uh, that's where I do my most of my exorcisms. Then he turned to a bed on the opposite side of the room. He says, that's where... We restrain those who are violent. Then and uh, and uh, he reached in a box and showed us the straps he uses to tie down people that he can't that when he can't control the demons. He lovingly cradled his hands. He he lovingly Father Morris lovingly cradled in his hands the crucifix and stole that are such an important part of his Catholic tradition. Bob Larson writes as he concluded, the Lord impressed me to ask something. The Holy Spirit prompted at that moment. I, I asked Father Amorth, would you bless me and my wife, <coughs> should I, my new wife, I should say. <laughs> he didn't say my new wife, but I'm saying it. He says, would you bless me and my wife and share your anointing with us? He writes, well, without hesitation, Father Amorth rubbed his finger in anointing salve and made the sign of the cross on my forehead. Then he made the sign of the cross on my chest and put one hand on my, on my head and the other over my heart. The room was filled with sacred silence as his deep, tender voice invoked the power and blessing of the Holy Spirit over me with my new wife. I mean, my wife, Laura. Okay, so here, Bob Larson is taking this gesture, this kind gesture by father's elderly priest, by Father Amorth to pray over him. Uh, This Baptist minister is is uh, interpreting this, that he's ordained me an exorcist again, only a Catholic bishop can ordain a Catholic priest to be an exorcist. So objectively speaking, Bob Larson is a fake exorcist. He's a Baptist, he's Protestant, and he's not a Catholic priest. I mean, he may do deliverance prayers like any one of us can do. Deliverance prayers, the Our Father is a deliverance prayer. Notice the way it ends, deliver us from evil. Every time you pray the Our Father, you're doing a deliverance prayer against evil spirits. The St. Michael the Archangel is a deliverance prayer. The soul of Christ, Anima Christi, That's a deliverance prayer. There's a lot of deliverance prayers in the Catholic Church. We can do those prayers over ourselves and over our family. If you're dad, you have the authority to do it over your family. And you can pray deprecatory prayers over another person, which simply means that you can't lay your hand on his forehead because you're not a priest. You don't have authority. But what you can do, you know, that's why you should always carry sacramentals. Take a sacramental and put it on the person's hand, male or female. Tell them. Here, hold my rosary, hold it in your hands and stare at the crucifix as I pray for you an imprecatory prayer. And then you can pray like a St. Michael the Archangel prayer for them or the Anima Christi prayer or, you know, uh, any other type of deliverance prayer that the church has. So Bob Larson writes, this Baptist minister who considered himself the real exorcist on the Internet, he says, I was touched by the faithfulness of Father Amorth he doesn't have a dedicated group of spiritual warriors to help the to help bear the burdens like I do. He says, we now have more than 100 do-what-Jesus-did exorcism teams around the world. He goes, Father Morth, instead, he has to strap people down because only a few nuns and er- elderly people assist him. But Father Morth has something very important that we don't have as Baptists. He says, he has the backing 
and this is this is a pretty powerful statement. He goes, Father Amorth has the backing of the richest religious institution in the world to provide all his facilities and all his needs. In contrast, Bob Larson, the Baptist, says there isn't a single church in America or Canada that provides support for what we're doing to set the captives free. We depend solely on faithful friends like you to sacrificially make it possible to reach the lost and hurting. He says we desperately need a place like Father Amorth has for for prayer, worship, and ministry around the clock. So he's moved from Phoenix, Arizona. He's now in Scottsdale, Arizona, and his his place is called his uh his denomination is called the Freedom the the Spiritual Freedom Church and Center in in Scottsdale, Arizona. So that's where he uh has his ministry uh to 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 those in need of healing and deliverance. And again, um, he writes he uses a lot of again he he trains his people to use the Roman ritual, which is a no-no. Bob Larson is, uh, he's not a youngster anymore. He's a 76 years, he's 76 years old. So he's, uh, he was born in uh, Southern California, raised in Nebraska. I'll tell you where I, I came to hear about him. Back in the 80s, when I was flipping the channel one day, I heard this radio show called Talk Back with Bob Larson. Back in the early 80s, I was uh, working in the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. I was a rookie cop. And I'll tell you what grabbed me is that this program is that you had teenagers that were calling into this program. And these teenagers were, you know, they were talking about role-playing games and rock music. Some of these teenagers that would call, they would talk about the subject of Satanism. Some of them would say that they were satanically richly abused. Some of them would say that they were... uh, Satanists or witches, and they would call in. So uh, I found this kind of fascinating because I'd never heard this before. And so Bob Larson, even amongst Protestants, uh, I mean, uh, he took them by surprise because he was doing some, he was reaching out to people that were diabolically afflicted, so to speak. And he would pray for them on the air, and he would, you know, he'd do the standard, you know, repent and and, and, and do the, the, the Protestant sinner's prayer and stuff, you know. And so... He, that's where I heard, first heard of him and I haven't listened to him in years he sounded you know, like a typical Protestant but now in these last couple of years since I've kind of reconnected and seen what he's up to now yeah he's, uh, he's gone off the rails he taught his three daughters to be extra they're called the teen extra very dangerous to be back Hi, this is Jesse Romero from the Terry and Jesse Show, also from Jesus 911. Let's face it, we all need to use the internet, but we need screen accountability. Why? Pornography is a huge problem, especially on the internet. And every time we tap into the internet, we get bombarded with images and temptations that degrade our humanity. So we need Covenant Eyes to block these pornographic sites and advertisements from infiltrating our lives. Covenant Eyes helps us take custody of our eyes and custody of our intellect. So I recommend you go to CovenantEyes.com and type in the promo code VMPR to support the network. Protect yourself and your family from the eminent threats on the internet. www.covenanteyes.com code VMPR live porn free. Thank you for listening to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Thank you. God bless you. Keep the faith. In Luke 7, Jesus said, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven her because she has been shown great love. According to St. John of the Cross, Christians should always remember that the value of their good works is not based on number and excellence. Their value is based on the love for God that prompts them to do the works. May we always be motivated by true love for God and not worry so much about what we do, but why we do it. 
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Now, back to Jesus 911. If this call is not an emergency, dial 888-526-2151. Full Patrol, Jesus 911, one-man car. We're talking about the authority, or the lack thereof. There's a Protestant by the name of Bob Larson. He's been around a long time. He's 76 years old. He's pushing 80. Uh, on the internet, he he portends to call himself the real exorcist. He dresses like a Catholic priest. I don't know why he just doesn't become Catholic. Okay, um, he dresses like a Catholic priest, and he uses it's an, it's another no no. He, he he's plagiarizing from Catholicism. He uses the Catholic rich, uh, Roman ritual that contains the rite of exorcism, and he teaches his uh his teams to use this catholic book which can only be used by a catholic priest with the permission of the bishop and here's also what's dangerous he has three daughters young adult daughters he's supposedly trained them on being exorcists so they've uh they've got this little shtick going they go around to protestant uh protestant denominations around the country in conferences and they're they're known or they're they're introduced as the three exorcists, the three teen exorcists. And uh, they get invited to Protestant conferences to do public exorcisms. It's very dangerous what Bob Larson has, do, has done with his daughters. And I'll tell you, again, I used to hear him back in the 80s for a couple of years. I was entertained by him for a while. He seemed to be, a, you know, a, a basically a, a regular, you know, garden variety fundamentalist. But in these last couple of years, he has gone off the rails. He, he left his first wife. He's he's on a second marriage. He's uh he's definitely misunderstands the whole issue of authority. And I'll tell you, here's here's where some of the things that are very concerning. Again, he teaches young people to be exorcists. Young people, you know, millennials. First of all, the only person that can be trained to be an exorcist, so to speak is a Catholic priest. Those are the only ones because they have to have the lawful authority and the ordination from a Catholic bishop. Also, Bob Larson, another thing he does, which is kind of, he charges $495 for an ex, for a 50-minute exorcism, 50 minutes in, in public at a conference, okay? Now, he still passes the basket around. I mean, he'll, like at these conferences that people will go to, you'll have about two or three people that are supposedly possessed. So uh, he'll do a t- uh, uh, an exorcist over over these people that are there, three or four people. They're charged four hundred ninety five dollars each, each, and then he passes the basket around for everybody else. He says, "Hey, I want to take this ministry over to Germany. I want to take this ministry over to Ireland or whatever." Can you help me uh, raise $50,000 so I can take this overseas to this country, that country? So he still passes the basket around. Uh, He also charges, if you go to his website, he charges $295 for a Skype exorcism. Okay? Is this microphone on? He charges $295 for a Skype exorcism. And he's actually said, uh, he was asked, he was asked in this, in this uh, daily, uh, this TV show, this morning show, he was asked about how effective these Skype exorcisms are. And Bob Larson said, oh, Skype is a great technology to stare down the devil, to go after him and to kick him back to hell. Okay. I'll tell you why that's not true. Right. Because as a Catholic, healing, deliverance, and exorcism, as taught by the Catholic Church in 2,000 years, is incarnational just like god became a man in the person of christ exorcism is also incarnational okay 
to, to pray over and drive out a demon has to be done in person. And there has to be, again, this incarnational element, uh, sacramentals, uh, you know, uh, the raising of the hands, the stole. All these things are incarnational. They, they have to be done in, in, in the presence of the diabolical. And so here's another thing where, again, Bob Larson in this last couple of years, he's just gone off the deep end. And I'll tell you what's, uh, what is dangerous, what he does. He does supposedly these public conferences where he has these exorcisms and these conferences. Now, to be sure, you're probably going to have some people that are actually demonized that are going to these things. And what's going to happen is because he's outside of his lane of authority, you're going to have demonic transference, number one. And number two, just like I read to you in Acts chapter 19, you're going to have retaliation. Absolutely, you're going to be retaliated against. Somebody's asking a question about a mom's authority. So let me jump in to answer that question about a mom's authority. Okay. <clears throat> does a mom have spiritual authority over her children? Yeah, she does. Absolutely. Here's a couple of verses in the Bible. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. It says, honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land of the Lord. Your, your God is giving you. So notice the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. And the word honor is the Hebrew word, kovida, which means to glorify, to glorify your parents. So Exodus chapter 20, verse 12 does demonstrate that mom and dad, dad and mom, should I say, have a spiritual authority over the children. So the question is, do, do, does mom have spiritual authority over the children? Yes, yes. Here's another demonstration. Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. That says, children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Notice, children, it doesn't say children, obey your dads only. It says, children, obey your parents in everything. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Another demonstration that moms have spiritual authority over their children. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may have a long life on earth. Again, I give you three verses. Honor and obey your dad and mom, father and mother. So yes, moms have spiritual authority over their children to pray for them and to bless them. There's an example of, of a laywoman, Holy Hannah. Hannah in the Old Testament she she presents her son she presents her son Samuel to the Lord through Eli the high priest who was the second to the last of the judges of Israel it tells us here in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 25 to 28 they brought the child to Eli then Hannah spoke up excuse me my lord as you live my lord i am the woman who stood here near you praying to the lord i prayed for this child and the lord granted my request now I, in turn, give him to the Lord as long as he lives. He shall be dedicated to the Lord. Then they worshiped there before the Lord. Close quote. There we see. Hannah prays and God responds. Hannah prays a blessing for her child and God responds and blesses the child. Moms have spiritual authority over their children. It's pretty clearly. And again, especially if mom has lives in a state of grace, that's most important. James 5, 16. The prayer the fervent prayer of a righteous person is very powerful. If you're a person that pursues a life of holiness and intimacy with God, then your prayers are going to be very powerful. And your holiness and your prayer life are also going to affect your husband's conversion. Just read 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Your holiness affects your husband's conversion. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Hey, this weekend, June 6, Spiritual Warfare Online Conference, it's called Terms of Engagement. We're going to be getting deep into this stuff. Myself, Dan Schneider, Kyle Clement, we're going to be talking about power and authority of healing, deliverance, and exorcism, giving you the 2,000-year-old teaching of the Catholic Church. You can join us online. It's Saturday, June 6, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can register by going to liberchristo.org, L-I-B-E-R-C-H-R-I-S-T-O.org, liberchristo.org liberchristo.org this Saturday, 
Spiritual Warfare Online Conference. It's called Terms of Engagement. We're going to be going deep through all of this stuff, power and authority in healing, deliverance, and exorcism, the do's and don'ts. I'm going to be a presenter. Uh, uh, Kyle Clement's going to be a presenter and Dan Schneider. If you don't know who these guys are, these guys are the top instructors uh, handpicked by Father uh, Chad Ripperger himself, and they teach at Father Chad Ripperger's institute called Liber Christu. That's what they teach, healing, deliverance, and exorcism. These guys are the best in the world. We will be having the conference this Saturday, LiberCristo.org. You can register at LiberCristo.org, L-I-B-E-R, C-H-R-I-S-T-O uh, dot O-R-G. Hope to see you this Saturday. Invite us, yeah, hey, invite people. If people are interested in, in spiritual warfare, which they should be. All of us need to be interested and, uh, and concerned about spiritual warfare. Uh, th- there's a rise in satanic activity like we haven't seen in decades. So this Saturday, Spiritual Warfare Online Conference is called Terms of Engagement. Uh, Go ahead and join us. Myself, Dan Schneider, Kyle Clement. These are Father Ripperger's instructors on healing, deliverance, and exorcism. The conference is going to be this Saturday, June 6th, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And just one more demonstration that women have authority over their children. Their prayers are powerful. Remember in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, all the way to Acts chapter 2, verses 1 and 3, you have the holy women, the Blessed Virgin Mary and other holy women, Praying together, they pray together for nine days in the upper room in Jerusalem, and the Holy Spirit responds to their prayers very powerfully and descends upon them on the tenth day, and they're filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, these were women praying with the apostles, and they called down the Holy Spirit, and the church was born. Absolutely, moms have spiritual authority over their children. And again, Most importantly, live in a state of grace. If you live in a state of grace in a right relationship with God, you're going to have a powerful effect on your husband, on your family, as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And uh, it's it's just uh, what a joy. What a joy uh, to be able to do this program and share the fullness of truth with Catholics. And you know what? And I also pray that Bob Larson, that uh, God touches his heart one day and makes him realize that he's a fake exorcist and that he joins an RCIA class uh, somewhere in the, in, the, in the Phoenix area and comes into the Catholic Church because what he's doing is dangerous. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure in, in large part his, uh, his first marriage was compromised as a result of some of the things that he's doing. He probably means well, but he's uh, playing with fire. All right, we're done. Jesus 911, stick around. Don't turn that dial. You don't want to miss what's coming up. Gary Machuda, the big guy, hands-on apologetics in the dojo with Big Gary. See you next time. Same Christ time, same Christ channel. And see you this Saturday at the Spiritual Warfare Online Conference. LibraCristo.org. Sign up right now. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole Church, grant it love and the light of thy Spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great High Priest, May the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.